G'day Hawks fans and welcome to what's hopefully the first of a few sort of iterations of Trey Talk. Of course, Trey Talk talking about all things off-season with the Hawthorne Footy Club in the lead-up, of course, to the draft. But before we can focus on who the club might be bringing in to begin their careers, let's talk about some guys who might be extending their careers, potentially at Hawthorne or at a different club, which is what the next half an hour is going to be all about. Chris is here as per usual. How are you, mate? Back together again? I'm good, mate. Yes, it was, sort of, it was nice to sort of have a little uh, a break at the end of the season, but um, here we are. Like I've kept tabs on all the trade talk. I'm, I'm pretty excited. You know, you're hearing rumours and you're trying to put a picture in your head of what uh, next year might look not like. But, um, yeah, clubs have obviously made some decisions already. So, yeah, I guess we'll uh, discuss that first. Yeah, nothing better than a trade rumour, mate. Let me tell you, the rumour mill goes sharply this time of year. So, of course, the Hawks not playing in finals and what a week one of finals it was. And uh, I don't know about you, Chris, but, geez, it makes me miss watching the Hawks in finals. Yes, oh, it does, mate. It does hurt. But, um, geez, I tell you what, I've watched uh, three of the four finals last week and there's some cracking games. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm interested. and it's um, It's definitely open, isn't it? And as Sam Mitchell said on Footy Classified, it just opens the door to let us as a club know where we're at and where we need to get to in order to play finals footy. So Hawthorne fans, let us know where you are watching or listening from, whether, of course, you're here live or you're watching it back. We always like to know how well the global reach is going when it comes to Talking Hawks. Of course, if you haven't followed us on Twitter, go and do so. If you're not subscribed to us on YouTube, I mean, come on, the road to 1K, there's not that long to go. So go ahead and do that as well. Before we get into the trade stuff, of course, there has been some off-season workings. And that, of course, will start sort of reverse chronologically. And that is a couple of coaches in Damien Moncourse, And Andy Otten have departed the footy club. Now, Andy Otten, of course, came in as a playing coach for the VFL. He couldn't quite get out on the park as a player, but he departs as a very highly rated uh, VFL uh, coaching fraternity. Chris, and of course, we wish him all the best. Yeah, I was slightly surprised by that, but um, maybe they've obviously sort of got other people in the picture maybe or just contracts ended maybe maybe they've they've come to the club and wanted to take on uh, other uh, other opportunities i'm not sure but yeah both both serve the club very well and um yeah wish them all the best in their next endeavors yeah absolutely and of course a fan favorite in damien Moncourse, the 1990 mm-hmm. premiership ruckman for the pies has departed now i'm not saying it's a coincidence but he did manage to leave on the day that allen's announced that they were taking more products off the shelf so less lollies for the players and all of a sudden monkeys roll had diminished in a big way but every hawthorne person it's incredible it's not often that we uh, align ourselves with a coach that's not the senior coach as much as the hawthorne fans have with monkey so we wish him all of the very best and fingers crossed we might even get him on the show one day chris that would be fantastic yeah i reckon we'll have to um knock on his door and see if he's uh, available to have a chat but we did have an interesting question. What, what, what's the chances Clarko recruits him over to North? You reckon that's a sneaky? Yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely think so. Anthony Rocker got uh, let go by North, who I think was their forwards coach, also working pretty uh, closely with Callum Coleman-Jones, who, as we know, uh, went across from the Tigers as a ruck forward type. So, yeah, that could definitely be uh, on the cards. I think everyone that leaves Hawthorne now is going to be uh, associated with Clarko. I think he's uh, run up quite a phone bill the uh, four-time premiership coach, as we know. And uh, let's go to the players, mate. So Kyle Hardigan was the latest of the delistings. The rumour mill is that St Kilda, a bit like they did with uh, Chip Frawley only a few years ago, look like they're going to pick him up as an insurance policy. The Saints, of course, without Dougal Howard, kind of threw Josh Battle back there, who did very nicely, but they don't have a hell of a lot of depth behind that. So uh, a smart decision by the Saints. And um, Kyle was a decent enough insurance policy while we developed some other key backmen. Yeah, definitely. And while he's not big on stats, I think he played his role. Um, I think we sort of noticed him maybe slowing down at times. But, um, yeah, he he dominated at at Box Hill, I felt. Um, So I think he's still got a a bit more to give. Um, It's a bit of a risky move on Saints' behalf, but it's coming at a cheap cost. So, yeah, Mm. why not? Two years. I'd take two years. Yeah, buy low. That's the way it goes. 30 years old, I think he'll be by the time round one starts. And, of course, the other delistings 
in uh, and I get the feeling I'm going to forget someone here, so you can crucify me in the comments, but Daniel Howe, Tom Phillips, Jackson Callow, Connor Downey, they're the four that speak out to me. Of course, Ben McAvoy retired, so that would be the fifth with Hardigan becoming the sixth there. I think I've got that list right there. Connor Downey's body couldn't get really right for him. Tom Phillips, we brought over for a fourth round pick, so I'm not that uh, too disappointed in his departure. We didn't really give up a lot to get him, so uh, it is what it is, and we wish Flip all the very best. One of the best clubmen, we're being told, so congratulations to him. And, of course, Daniel Howe, who uh, always seemed to be on the fringe throughout his um, uh, eight years at the Hawks. Chris, and we're going down a different path. Yeah, no, we certainly are. Um, it is a, a full rebuild at this stage, isn't it? Um, so Phillips to Coburg says, Tom, I don't know if that's legitimate or if that's just a, a rumour there. Um, there you go. The one you missed, was it? Did you miss Liam Shields? Um, missed Pup. Yeah, my apologies, Pup. That's not good enough by me. Yep, definitely. I, uh, I was just, I was so conditioned to the idea he was going to join Clarko, I just left him off the list. So Pup as well, I do apologise. The uh, 250 gamer himself. And uh, Daniel Howe, I just want to finish on this point. Um, the only thing that's going to come of it, I have a sickly feeling that if he ever does become a dad one day, he's going to have a uh, top five draft pick worthy and we're not going to get him under the 100, you know, Dean Anderson, Noah style. So, Daniel, uh, do us the right thing, please. And, uh, you know, maybe a father-daughter for the AFLW. If that's the path you go down in your future, it would be really, really nice. AFLW girls struggling a bit at the moment, but there's everyone that departed the club, mate. Let's talk about some guys that the Hawks could potentially bring in. And this is where we're calling on the fans. Comment below. I Okay, we're not going to get the bond. <laughs> we're not going to get, you know, Jackson McRae. We're not going to get, the, you know, these guys. Rory Laird's probably not going to be on the table. So let's keep it a little bit realistic, but let's have a chat about whether we can bring in certain guys, whether we could trade certain guys. And the more specific your comment, the higher chance that we'll react to it. So get in that comment section and let us know who you think we might bring in or take out. And Chris, the player that I want to start with, the most popular man potentially going out, uh, your thoughts on Tom Mitchell potentially going elsewhere. What seems like the third year in a row? Oh, I don't want to get my, uh, my own thoughts and emotions involved, but as a business deal, I think it makes sense for both parties. Um, he, he served as well, Brownlow medalist. Best and fairest winner. Um, but as far as moving forward as a club, and as we've seen it this year, giving the kids more uh, midfield time, I think it would suit him to move on and for us to, yeah, to move him on as well. So as far as where we sit, um, what we would get in a deal, I'm not sure. But um, I don't think his currency is huge. But I guess for a team, it's the last piece of the puzzle. Um we might get a little bit of currency out of him. Well, the ironic part is up until probably uh, six weeks ago, um, Sydney might have been the best fit for him, considering that's where we got him from. But I look at a port. Um, Tom Mitchell to the Bombers, Tom, kind of makes me happy because the Bombers are the one midfield that don't need him. Mm. <laughs> so that would be a, uh, a nice little clip to a rival there. St Kilda also. Um would might be a team uh, that is interested. Um, I do worry the fair compensation is a thing that'll be uh, going around. We'll have to pay a fair chunk of his salary, Graham. Agreed, probably around the 200, 250K mark, which probably tells us that our leverage when it comes to a trade, it's definitely a first that's off the table. And I think the Hawks will ask for a second, clubs will offer a third, and then we'll probably try and snag potentially a future. A future second, I think, is the the best case scenario for me, especially if you're going at a, a mid-table club like a Port or a St Kilda. That gets you a round pick 28 next year. That's kind of, I think, best case scenario for Titch. Yeah, I, I don't think first round in my head it makes sense. Um, if we get it, I'll be stoked. Um, somewhere, <laughs> <laughs> somewhere in that um, second round pick, I think, and like you said, maybe some exchanges of picks or future picks would um, – Suffice. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, if it's a, a Titch v Warple, Sam is going to back in his man Jimmy Warple. But of course, if all clubs are offering us or a fourth or something, I am not begrudging Titch coming back. That's not the point of this conversation in the slightest. Uh, are the fans bringing up anyone except for Titch, mate? 
Um, well, it's a bit bit off topic, a little bit outside of Hawthorne, but um, Junior Rioli going to Port. So that I guess that leads into Brockman leaving. Um, what do you think yeah, about that? Int- interesting, that one. And uh, the, it can tie into Hawthorne a little bit because former Hawk Xavier Ellis on his podcast, of which I am a religious listener to, mm-hmm. uh, claims that Junior owes West Coast. And, hey, I can completely understand where he's coming from. I you know, I get it, but if Junior thinks that the best thing for his career is to be in Port Adelaide, I think, you know, you got to live with it, and West Coast will be in the market for a small forward. So uh, Tyler Brockman does seem to be one of those local boys they could potentially get back. The Eagles were very interested in Devin Robertson, but I think he's going to sign on with Brisbane, especially since they're giving him a run in the finals. So they're going to need some spark up forward to accompany Liam Ryan. So Brocky might be the man there for sure. Back on the, the Tommy Mitchell thing before we move on. Mm. Uh, did you take that? I know, I know Ollie Henry's been a bit of a bit of talk in the last day or two. Um, I, guess, I guess it goes you know with, what? The, with how much you pay of his salary, but I'd, mm. I'd probably take that. Yeah, I probably would. It wouldn't be what I'd walk into the negotiation with, but yeah, if it's probably. what I'm walking out with, I think I can live with it. I think yeah. I think because I think with Ollie, what I'm seeing on social media is there's a lot of people that's going, well, he couldn't get a game. And, you know, there is some truth to that. And that's why you've got to go after these guys. You think that they can go to another level. But the Pies are at worst a semi-final team. He got a knock at the wrong time. He came on as a sub in the wet and kicked four against the Dockers. He won them a game at the MCG with a clutch last quarter. Might have actually been against us. Now that I'm thinking about it uh, at the G as well, I think for pure footy IQ yeah. and for a forward, I think it works. He's a forward that doesn't rotate through the midfield. That's okay. You don't need to. So I'm a big fan. Uh, yes, we need a true centre-half forward, says Nick. We do. Do you have any in mind, Nick? <laughs> I, would love right, to, uh, I would love to know. Partly, partly Henry there, but um, Tanner Bruin. And yeah. I'm happy for you to, um, you know, pump yourself up here because you, you called it pretty early with the Tanner call. Um, yeah, I haven't, I haven't quite found the exact sound bite yet, but I do know that it was March yep. that I said keep an eye on him wanting to come home and we should we should go after him. Uh, I don't think we'll get both. So I, th- I don't, yeah, there's no reason for us to get both, even with Punky probably not being at the Hawks three years from now. That's a, probably a pretty... Uh, common sense thing to think. I think Tanner is deciding between Hawthorne and Geelong. You know, you've got some media reports saying it's Geelong, some saying us. So we'll put two and two together and say that that's a coin flip. If Tanner does pick us, I think we'll drop off on Ollie Henry. If Tanner picks Geelong, I think Ollie Henry will become, I think we want a pure damaging forward 50 player who is settled a little bit. Tanner Bruins played 30 games. I think Ollie Henry's played 18, 20 odd. Someone can fact check that. For me, um, and of course, while Sam Butler uh, comes through as well, and and if Tyler Brockman uh, does stay, uh, Sam Butler, Tyler Brockman, Ollie Henry, and then you've got your your midfielder that's rotating forward is a pretty good, a pretty good I, quartet. I guess part of that is potential Gunston uh, exiting the club, but mm. I haven't really heard much much rumours of that lately. Yeah, uh, where do where do you sit on that? Why not? I had a feeling he was probably likely to move on, but with without much whispers going on, I'm maybe thinking he might stay. I'd love him to it, stay. It has softened. Well, I noticed in the Liam Shields memoriam video, Gunner said, I'm going to miss you at the club next year. Oh. Ooh. So. Wow. Yes. Has that told up? Now, things can change over time. Don't get me wrong, but I can only quote Jack there, and that's what he said. So... <laughs> I'm going to say stay uh, right, at this point. Good, uh, Daz is called call redeeming himself of the knuckle. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. That was great. Yeah, I think that's what we call an equaliser, Justin, which is fantastic. You can't, you can't uh, yeah. call them all right, mate. You can't have a 100% strike rate. You've done well to call no, it. But... No, that's it. I'll, uh, I think what's the media rule? I'll tell everyone when I'm right and everyone will tell me when I'm wrong. There you go. Uh, let's, is let's Broad any good? What, what they're looking at, mate. You're all over him, so give him a a snapshot of what we're looking at if we get him. So first round draft pick who 
<laughs> he became a meme after GWS called him out and he didn't look particularly happy that he was leaving Victoria. So is Bruin any good? Statistically, if you go look at like AFL tables, which for a footy nerd like me is always in the browser, they're not going to be the most outstanding of stats. What Tanner is going to do once he's comfortable, I believe, is be a pure forward half player that can pressure, find the footy and kick goals. He's got footy IQ, which is why he was taken in that first round. His draft combine was very, very good. I just think he is a case of he was just drafted to the wrong place. I think it's as simple as that. He had a 20 disposal, three goal game, I think, last year. Yes, that's a while ago, I understand. But I can understand if you're looking at his numbers going, geez, we're kind of hyping this up a little bit. I do believe that we're not going to give up a second for him. I, even though I love him, I'm not giving up pick 24 for him. That's just off the table. Now, do we back ourselves in, give up a future second for Tanner and maybe a future third? Well, that's a conversation um, that probably opens up more to the fans. But is Tanner Bruin any good? Yes, he is. And in a Hawthorne jumper, I think he'll thrive. Yeah. And in a, in a Geelong jumper, I don't want to borrow him. <laughs> nice. Well said. <laughs> um, all right. Um, geez, I'm trying to keep up with these. I'm trying to get the guys in who got in early. Um, here we go. What's your thoughts on that? Does Warple stay? Uh, yes. Yep. Yep. If Mitchell's um, getting shopped around, Warple is going nowhere. Ironically, the one team that's not being talked about in the Tom Mitchell thing that I think needs to be talked about is Port. Port. Port are the club yeah. that need an inside mid. Why, if they're not going to Matt Crouch, which it looks like they're not, why aren't they going after Mitchell? If and they're especially, going after Jaeger, especially if you're picking him up cheap, you're getting an eight. Yeah. Or, I don't know if he's still an A grader, but you're still getting a quality midfielder at a decent price, I think. Yeah, and considering you know, I know you've got a nucleus to to pay there. Uh, we need to mention the Carl Amon to the Hawks uh, is done and a good get, fantastic get, Cody. You and the CEO of the fan club in uh, Jake Smith have been partying for days. I know that. Yes, that yes. we've got Carl on board, which is fantastic. And the wings look set, mate, of course, with Harry Morrison signing a fresh two-year deal just this morning. So a big congratulations to Harry Morrison. We won't touch on this now. I'll just quickly let Greg know. Join us for some more uh, uh, draft talk later mm. or draft picks, I should say, not trade talk. So, yeah, we'll touch on that later in uh, the season, I guess. Absolutely, we will. But to half answer your question, to tease you for the next one, I think two of those we absolutely need to look at. And one of them is I'm not understanding the hype as much just yet. I'm not going to explain which of those, but, yeah, two of those I'm really excited about and one of them I need to see a bit more of. But more on that, as Chris said, um, a bit later. There we go. Henry will go to Geelong, says and, Tom. Well, welcome, Tanner. He, he was um, he was uh, talked about going there. Um, so back to your thing before. Yes, he kicked that winning goal against us. He did. Oh, yeah. Be nice for him to uh, come slip on the jumper and uh, return the favour. Yeah, well, Isaac Smith being yeah. this, I think, in a game. Um, McCl Hayden McLean. Wow, that's interesting. I don't uh, that. Tommy, yeah, no, it's he's just not getting a gig at the moment. He's take he takes plenty of money. He played very well in the VFL final against Carlton. Took some took some really nice grabs. And um, you're looking at tall forwards from around the league. Josh Corbett, who came second to Fergus Green in the VFL goal kicking, was one potentially to look at. But it looks like Frio are going to acquire uh, his services. But yeah, Hayden McLean would be one that's definitely looking for opportunity elsewhere. Um, they sure. will probably come back to this if you want to quickly touch on it while I look for the next comment, um, Daz. Yeah, I think I definitely think between Cozzy being in contract for next year and Jerome probably coming in, uh, we might be going a year too early on the centre-half forward front. So fingers we crossed we get Jerome again. Tom's got his finger on the pulse. Um, strong talk on Morris going to Port. Oh, there you go. I'm guessing you're talking about there. Yeah. yeah. There you go, Joshy Morris. Interesting. Right. Okay, haven't heard that one. Here's one who has been a bit of talk lately, uh, Liam Stocker. Um, I'm, from what we're hearing, it doesn't sound like we're too keen on the, the prospect. And yeah, no, it was um, – I do feel for the kid, the the mental straining, because he was essentially the first time a, a club had traded up with a future pick 
uh, to pick someone up. So he was obviously going to be under the pump from the start. And Liam's been pretty open in the past about his <laughs> mental health. So my advice to him, not as a footballer, but as just a, a fellow guy, a fellow human being, um, I just hope he goes okay mentally throughout the rest of the year in 2023 and see what happens after that. Fair call from Michael here. Yeah, McStay, Domino needs to fall before Gunston makes his move, which, um, yeah, yep. makes He's makes got, he, he is actually less than a dollar to go to Collingwood at this point. <laughs> uh, Dan McStay, I don't even think Collingwood can uh, can pull that one out. What do you uh, reckon Bruins, about that? Okay, interesting. We'll find out together, Ben. <laughs> I like him. Um, time will tell. Yeah, that's it. Big fan, which I don't mind. The uh, broom could potentially be a similar potential. Yeah, exactly. Justin, you speak my language. Fantastic. The one that's funniest to me, I know you're going to keep bringing comments up. Um, Darcy Parrish is not leaving Essendon. <laughs> so, and, uh, I got a little bit excited by that prospect. I'm like, I'm, oh, I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> I'm enjoying SEN's coverage, uh, the trade bell, Jared Waitley, Sam Edmund. It's a fantastic conversation, but, uh, yeah, no, not happening. Uh, Brockman and pick six for West Coast, pick two. I mean, if I had any indication on if the Hawks were absolutely dead set on Harry Sheasel, I'd do it in a heartbeat. I really would. Um, but if, you, if they're kind of... Wondering, do they go Wardlaw or, or Elijah Sardis? So I would probably say no. So the only reason I would do it is if we took Harry Sheasel, which uh, which would be fantastic. All right, Sam Hayes. Sam Hayes. Yeah, the the rock department's going to be an interesting one for us because um, there are some ruckmen. Lloyd Meek, who looks like the Giants and might be the best fit for him, but in almost every team, I'd argue in half of the AFL clubs, there's a ruckman that's on the edge that we might be. Going round again, I mean, if you do bring a Sam Hayes in, do you expect him to play? Is he automatically ahead of Max Lynch fully fit? I'm not sure. I think the Hawks have figured out that the mid-season draft is going to be the place to look at Ruckman. We've already got Ramsden. Um, so we'd have to have a pretty disastrous injury season, kind of like what we did this year for it. So don't quite overreact to the injuries we had this year. We might have a full bill of health and Ned Reeves might play 22 games next year. And uh, we got told, I don't know if you were in this particular conversation, that the big noodle, breaking news, is going to be taking over the number seven from big boy McAvoy, which will be fantastic. Yes, you dropped a little bomb there. Thanks, mate. That was good. I'm not sure um, if that's a bomb. Just just, just a nugget of information. That's all. Oh, look, I think you could have put a handful of plays in for that number seven, and um, that was probably one I kind of thought was a bit left centre, but Ruckman to Ruckman, I, I like it. Um, <laughs> tell us your thoughts on this, mate, because I'd love to know. I, I don't, I'm not all over the uh, the trade talk like some of you guys are, but who do you who's, think who's... gives the worst trade mail? Oh, big. Uh, okay. Well, I kind of take fans out of this because we just love to speculate. So um, in terms of media, I I don't think it's a particular person. I think it's a particular phrase. And that phrase is simply could. I hate the word could um, from, from, from journalists and from media personalities because, you know, if you replace – the player in question with someone you definitely know won't be traded, then you can see how nonsensical it is. So instead of saying Tom Mitchell could join Port Adelaide for a second round pick, for example, if you replace that with Marcus Bontempelli, it sounds nonsense and it's nonsense no matter who's in there. So journalists, unless you've heard it from a reputable source, say that it's been spoken about that this uh, is potentially on the market or uh, tell it to us as your opinion. Hiding behind the word could really, really gets on my nerves. All right. Um, I think I did hear a little bit about Ham. Um, maybe not so much linked to us, but what, have you heard anything about? Uh... Yeah. Uh, old Porky. He's going to, he's uh, apparently a really good fellow, which is a great start. And Aaron Francis is the other bomber who's potentially on the market, although I don't think we go near Aaron at all. I don't know what Braden would do in our best 22 that someone in our best 22 already doesn't do. And that's kind of how I look at trades, rightly or wrongly. You can happily disagree with that. But if we're bringing a guy in, um, especially a guy probably above the age of 21, then they need to be doing something better than the guy that's already in his spot does. And for me, I'm not sure if Braden 
uh, does a whole lot better than a Harry Morrison, uh, potentially a Will Day or, or, or a CJ. So well, he's played a lot more with uh, the big Harry Morrison. I don't think we touched on that earlier in the episode. So uh, congratulations to Harry. You've got the uh, the contract over the line, which we're all waiting for. Yeah, it uh, took it taking a while to uh, nut out those details. But, yeah, well-deserved two-year contract. I, I think that takes him through to three agency. Because he played the yeah. last game of 2017, didn't he? So that would be 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So that'll be six years plus two, eight. Yeah, mm. quick math tells me that'll take him to um, free agency. So congratulations to him. Um, Connor McKenna, um, just to share. <laughs> too, too seriously there. Yeah, well, they, the question remains, does he do – he's quicker than our halfbacks. I'll give him that, maybe except for CJ. Uh, no, I think Geelong's going to be the place. Lloyd Meek is underrated. Yeah, he's got a bit about him. He's just one of those guys who's just stuck behind one of the best rucks in the competition, uh, Cody, Lloyd. So he definitely needs to go to a place that's struggling for a number one ruck. And uh, the Giants look like one of those clubs. Um, there's not really too many around. Ironically, West Coast. I know Nick Nat signed on again, but you know Bailey J. Williams hasn't really announced himself yet. Might be the go, but I like Lloyd, so I'm with you. All right. Well, you did talk about Sheezel. You're a huge fan. I think a few of us are. Um, can we get the trade upgrade to make it happen? Well, well, yeah, we can. Um, I I do believe that it needs to be six and a player. It can't yep. be six and another bit of draft capital, in my opinion. Um, I don't think we can walk away going, we've given up six and a future, I mean, let's just say second. Um, because I don't think we can sit here right now and say that that second round pick is going to be outside of the 30s. I don't think we'll be a top 16 next year. Um, I don't think that's where we're looking at. It would be amazing if we were. <laughs> More than happy to be wrong here. But if we're giving up six and a pick in the top 30 just to get pick two, it's a massive gamble. I would much rather be six and a player and uh and go from there so without selling the farm to me uh, without selling more draft capital fingers crossed because harry looks an absolute star i'll right, drop this one from uh ben with morrison, with morrison re-signing and, and, and amon on the way how do you see bramble day cj scrimshaw squeezing in scrimshaw is a big body mid possibly actually talking about that we had a little bit of a chat to will day he's, he's got mm-hmm. his eyes on that spot doesn't he yeah, he does. Yeah, he does want to be an inside mid wheel, which we've uh, once he gets the the full time in the gym, and that's not a a body shaming thing. He's just been injured, unfortunately. He just yeah. keeps getting hurt in a wonderful and mysterious a mysterious way. It's not wonderful, a wondrous. All, I, say, a mysterious all I can way, keep so. thinking is James Hurd, just yeah. that wiry <laughs> frame, and just has that elite ability to have that vision and skill. Um, mm. But yeah, pe- people, oh, even in that five, you know those. Some some midfielders can play with that light frame. Mm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The the herd comparison for mine is is unreal. Just to be that big, you don't have to be the Patrick Cripps style bull. So um, I agree with you in that in that respect. Lockie Bramble to me is the interesting one because those other three I can absolutely see being best twenty two for a decade. Bramble might be the odd man out in that situation. So of all those ones to watch, definitely keep an eye on. Uh, on Lockie Bramble might be a career defining year for him next year. One to watch. I feel like he's comfortable in that back line. Uh, he's got a great kick on him, but I also feel like he's got a tank big enough to play that wing role. So I've I'd, I'd, I'd got a preference on having a bigger winger, especially if we've got Morrison on the other wing. Um, CJ's another one who can potentially swing on the wing. We, obviously, if we we're recruiting Amon, yeah, it, it is a bit of a squeeze, isn't it? Um, Mm, it's tough. Mm. It's yeah, be, if, uh, if I'm, yeah, go yeah, if I'm if I'm picking from that defensive half of the ground, wings included, Bramble and Morris to me are the two that that stand out as the oh, you need to go to another level. Like you mm. really do. Now, now, can he? Absolutely, he can. Uh, yeah. He's shown he's shown some uh, some things that have made us go, oh yeah, we can really get around that. But yeah, he'll just be a watch at the moment, which is great. I think that's a little bit optimistic, Cody. But um, uh, if he can pull it off, I'd love it. I'd, t- I'd take half. <laughs> yeah, I would take half as well. Uh, but, uh, a little experiment. 
Will Day to the forward line. He yeah. he looked a bit out of place, and doesn't mean he can't um, you know work out the skills kick. to play that forward role. But kick kick two on his left. I don't think he's kicked a goal in his AFL career and his actual preferred foot yet. It's extraordinary from Wilbur. Uh, no, I think I think he's got to attack. The, I think he's got to see the game coming at him, attack the footy, and set it up from there. Scream, Day, and Sis. Uh, could all transition to the midfield and excel. Um, scream, yes. Day, yes. Sis for me. Uh, Dan, no. Uh, just because your Australian selectors are blind doesn't mean that uh, Hawthorne won't be He's one of the best architects in setting up players down back. So of all general defenders last year, he was number two for score involvements. He's a back pocket. It's unreal. Yeah, we, we talked about I was going to mention this a bit earlier. I feel, I feel a bit sorry for Downey. I think um, the opportunity wasn't there for him to really show his... Uh, True colours with his injury and his body not holding up. So I was thinking potentially there might be a rookie spot. He might get relisted potentially, mm-hmm. maybe. Um, but yeah, let's either way. Hope hope he um, can now further his career. Yeah, and w- yeah, we won't we won't know until we figure out how many guys we take on draft night. So yeah, looking forward to finding out uh, that. Of course. All right. Do a couple more and probably wrap it up, mate. I think. What do you reckon? Yeah, about the there? Irish left field, McLean and Amati. The Amati party haven't played much at the Swans. Either of them worth a look. Uh, if we all call Daz, uh, Amati, yeah. uh, Amati, no. I like the athleticism, but Mitch Mitch Lewis needs a he needs a partner in crime. I don't know. Mm. I think we. I think our X factor needs to be on the ground. Rather than in the air, personally, um, you know, Josh Kennedy's not X factor. Jack Rewalt's not X factor. Tom Hawkins isn't X factor. You know, these guys are superstars of the competition, but they are your consistent and incredible forwards, and that's what we need at the moment. Let the little blokes excite us. So, the Hayden McLean one, I'll probably think about a little bit more, but at this stage, I'll probably say no. Cozzy in contract, and Jerome Lawrence probably coming in um, fixes that one up. For me, I think. Mm. Well, there you go. There's the old uh, trade cozy talk. I haven't heard any rumours about it. I'm guessing that's just your opinion, Fred. Mm, yeah. I'll just, just give him 2023. If it works, awesome, and we'll keep him. And um, if it doesn't work out for him, then I don't think other clubs will go to him either with how much time he's been on the list. So uh, cool. career-defining year for Cozzy, which I can't wait for. I think I missed this one earlier. It was higher up the chat by somebody else, but uh, second second mention of Hunter Clark. Yeah, another one that I've called early, which I love. Yeah, classy. Me, Th- thank you. Someone else recognises Blake. You're right. you're like my you're on the podium of the the favourites for tonight because someone else has recognised the fact that this guy was a midfielder when he was drafted. St Kilda stuck him and Nick Caulfield on a halfback flank and went good luck to you. Oh, it was the- sorry. Sorry, Blake. I ignored. I didn't ignore you. I did. <laughs> there you go. I did mention it. It wasn't somebody else. He's, he's double yes. hit. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, love it. Hunter Clark. Yes, would love. Would be fantastic. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, if you want a couple that are out of contract or one out of contract that we haven't talked about tonight, that's just to keep an eye on who hasn't got a contract at the moment. Another one from the Pies, Tyler Brown. One hundred and eighty-eight yeah. centimeters. I think he is outside player. Another uh, one would on the be pies. good. Degoe, no, he's staying at the pies, mate. That eight hundred grand offers back yeah. on the table, so he'll be absolutely staying there. Uh, was Collingwood's best on Ooh, the weekend? Here we go. So Long Billy from Sank. Uh, ben Long. Oh, Ben Long, is it? No, Billy Longer was the ruckman at Sank. Oh, that. That's what uh, I mean. All right, my bad. Fun fact: I'll call myself out here. I remember Smithy and I, the Talking Hawks alumni, we were in English class when it was between him and McAvoy. And we went, which one would we rather? And we both said Billy Longer at the time. Mm. So when he was at Brisbane. So we'll put our hands up. We got that one really wrong. We love big boy uh, and we'll do better. And we've done better in the year since. But yeah, Ben Long, uh, I think Gold Coast or North are going to be leading that race um, for him. Bit right. how, much maybe? Does, how much does this factor in uh, what we do this year? Um. Yeah, I, or if it's the best if thing we're looking for at us, a future, yeah. getting him in, does that change what we do this year? No, I don't think so because if he if he goes well, Will's his name, I think. If if Will goes well, then it's we've got to worry about the draft capital next year because that's when he'll come through the draft. So 
No, personally, I don't think it'll. We've got the key back stocks anyway, and if Will looks like he'll fit in beautifully with our system, and he goes as a second round pick, let's say, then we'll make sure we've got the the draft capital for that. So I don't think it affects what we do this year at all. And I hope he goes well. And um, I think Ben Allen's got a son who's averaging about twenty eight touches in the last six weeks in the waffle, and he played didn't play enough games for us. So. <laughs> You know, thanks AFL for screwing us again. We just need to get the rule changed before he gets drafted. <laughs> yeah, All right. Is there anyone on your list that we haven't talked about tonight, Daz? Yeah, so uh, Tyler, if we're looking at buy dirt cheap, Tyler Brown would be one to look at. We would have to miss out on a few to go to him. So I don't think um, to yeah. that at all heard the uh, both gettable. Yep, they don't have a contract in front of them yet, Cody. So... Uh, that's going to be an interesting one. And, um, yeah, I think it's just going to be a wait and see and wait for more information to come out, to be honest, because I'm massively on the Hunter Clark train. I'm big on the Tanner Bruin train or the Ollie Henry train the, out of those two because I don't think we're going to make a massive splash after that. So uh, those we'll three. Landed, and We've landed yeah, Amon so. pretty much. That's a deal mm. done. Yep. So we can land one out of those other three. We're doing all right. Yeah, huge tick for mine. Go to the draft and... And whatever happens from there, it's pretty hard to do. I've written a couple of mock drafts up on a couple of different platforms, and it's so difficult with live trading uh, yeah. now. So, but all the good draft content will be coming to Talking Hawks very, very soon, mate. All right, mate. Let's wrap this first uh, draft talk up, and um, yeah, as soon as uh, a bit more mail drops, we'll uh, be back to discuss a bit more uh, trade talk. Yeah, we absolutely will. Thank you, fans. For- joining in if you haven't subscribed on youtube please do so go to talkingorks.com and you can catch up with all things hawthorne aflw our very own timmy newman wrote something fantastic after the st kilda uh, sorry after the essendon game about what it means to be a dad to young daughters following their dreams which is fantastic and you can catch up on his game reviews as well as the hawks girls go through their first season the season hasn't started as well as we would have liked but we're going to give the competition a shake up sooner rather than later uh, I'm not, Jazz after Fleming. all, yeah, Jazz Fleming, of course, sponsoring. So you can still donate there. The sponsorship page is still at talkinghawks.com forward slash player sponsorship. So you can get on board with that as well. We look forward to your company for more trade and draft talk. Uh, enjoy the finals, even though we might not be in them. We can cheer on Geelong losing. That's absolutely fine. Uh, until next time, thanks, Chris, and go the Hawks. Awesome, guys. Speak to you soon.